My name is Richard Conlon, and I play Alan Conway. And I'm Sally Reed, and I play Madge Conway. Um, my character's called uh, Madge Conway. She's the eldest of the Conway sisters in the play. She's 24 at the start of the play in 1919, and um, then she gets a wee bit older. And yeah, she's kind of often described as school mistressy by I think quite a few of her sisters, you know, um, kind of put her down for that. Um, she's been educated at uh, Girton School and she has started teaching by the time the play starts. So to be fair, she is quite direct and um, teacherly. I play Alan Conway, who's the eldest sibling in the Conway family. And he starts off being 25 and in the second act he becomes 44. So it's quite a big uh, range uh, that you have to play in age. But he's the quiet one. He's the shy, quiet, uh, a bit of a wallflower. Um, gets ignored an awful lot by the rest of the family. But then when he does say things, when he becomes content and happy, and he actually becomes the happiest and most content within the play, uh, he comes out with the pearls of wisdom and kind of the the theme of what the play is uh, and gives it its message. Also, my, my character's uh, big into politics. <laughs> Socialism. <laughs> Certainly is. Yes, so she's um, also trying to give across her message, I suppose, in mm. the play, um, her ideolo ideology about socialism. So she's just learning that. Cool. Alan, the, the role that Alan plays within the family is... I would say he's, he's kind of like the bedrock in that he is always dependable, he's always reliable, he's always there, he's the constant throughout. I think he's probably on stage the most, but he says the least. But he's just constantly there and sometimes forgotten about, but then used as a sounding board or as a butt of a joke uh, quite often. Um, but again, as I said, in, in Act 2, a change comes over Alan where he become, he reads a book and his beliefs change and he becomes much more contented with his life and where the rest of the family start to fall apart and, and hurt and, and blame each other for the pain that they're having in life Alan has a certain zen, <laughs> zen like quality to him yeah. and as I said you know he does bring up the themes of the play he uh, gives it its, its message which is just be nice <laughs> uh, I think Madge again is quite uh, like Alan, a bit more dependable and confident and commanding, but maybe with a bit more um, front-footed than Alan. So she's maybe the first one to get things going or um, sort things out um, in a much more vocal and direct mm. way than, than, maybe, than maybe you. Because mm. we're the el eldest of the family. Yes, so absolutely. Yeah. I'm under you. Yeah. Um, so some might say rude, but <laughs> and maybe maybe she thinks she's more, uh, um, kind of. Oh no, what's the word? Sorry. Maybe maybe she's maybe she thinks she's a bit more in control of the family and her siblings than they than than she is. Mm -hmm. So she maybe acts more like that than they give her credit for. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, because certainly in Act Two, she's the one who moves things forward and in act one she wants to move the game forward and get the game started and finished and so she can probably preach to people about socialism. <laughs> My character changes quite dramatically and um, she's on the kind of pinnacle of going somewhere really exciting in act one and act three which are both at the same time um, and we see in Act Two that maybe that hasn't gone that way, and what her the choices that she's made to not follow that path that she was maybe going to go on in Act One. So that's that's really huge for for um, Madge's kind of journey in the play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think with Alan. Uh, if, it, if it's about the themes of the play, that everybody, all the, the rest of the family and all the siblings and, and the mother as well and, and 
people that surround them, um, all have this ambition and this burning ambition and have this drive within them to see this is where their life is going to be. Mm. And Alan never has that, never had that. And I think when, it, when you see Act Two and the dreams and aspirations maybe haven't come true for a lot of the characters, um, Alan steps up and becomes the one that's sort of in control of his own destiny, of his own life. And because the, the themes of the play are, it's, it is about time, it's about what time does to people. And in a way, Alan disagrees with time and what time does to people. It's what people do with the time they are allotted and what they have. And he has all these very sort of scientific and kind, kind of mystical and, yeah. and there's something supernatural within the play as there is with an awful lot of J.B. Priestley's writing. And this one definitely has. Um, just touches of the supernatural, which is something that Alan's very much in tune with. Mm. Um, so I think the themes that are running within it, Alan's are the constant. And yeah, and if you take that, um, Alan's kind of foresight in, a, in Act 1, where uh, um, everyone else's ambition and what they want and are kind of desperate for as well, mm -hmm. is quite arrogant and quite, mm -hmm. you know, uh, full on. Mm -hmm. Alan's very... Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have that doesn't ambition. Have and he that, does yeah. say that one of the problems that he thinks people have in the world is that they're constantly thinking that time is beating them. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, that's why we, we, we grasp and hurt each other. Whereas you shouldn't. You should just relax into it. <laughs>